Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the uh, progressive encephalomyelitis with rigidity and myoclonus perm and the involvement of the glycine receptors in uh, progressive encephalomyelitis with rigidity and myoclonus. Okay, right, so we're just having a uh, revision of the role of the um, glycine receptors within the spinal cord. So we've now drawn on our alpha motor neuron here, and it will be going off to synapse on some skeletal muscle cells. So I might just show that here. So here it comes, and it will basically be synapsing on some skeletal muscle cell down here. So this represents our myofiber here. Okay, right. And let me just color that in. So here comes the blue axon of this uh, alpha motor neuron right round. Okay, and I think I'll just colour in the myofibre as well, I'll just finish that. So there in blue is the alpha motor neuron, and it's synapsing onto our uh, myofibre down here, in red. Okay, so, um, when the alpha motor neuron fires an action potential, it will trigger uh, some contraction in the skeletal myofibre down here. Okay, right. Uh, we'll just go over a little bit more anatomy of the spinal cord, just to give you a nice complete picture, and then we'll talk about the role of the glycine receptors in the um, spinal cord. Okay, so let's just talk about the, door, the um, white matter columns for a little bit. So basically, you have three distinct white matter columns, well in fact, three pairs of white matter columns. So this one back here, which I've drawn hard, well, there are two of them basically, there's a left one here and a right one here. This is the dorsal column, okay? So this is known as the dorsal white matter column, or just the dorsal column, okay? And this carries sensory neurons up to the brain, and often the sensory neurons will come straight into the dorsal column from um, the uh, dorsal root, basically. So often in this dorsal column you will have uh, the axons of primary sensory afferents which have carried the information all the way from the sensory apparatus in the periphery going up to the brain in the dorsal column. Okay, and as I say, you have two of them. You have the right dorsal column, which I've highlighted here, and then you have the mirror image of this, the left dorsal column over there. Okay, now let's have a look at these other white matter columns. You have another white matter column here in turquoise, and again you have its mirror image on the other side as well. So in turquoise here, this is the lateral white matter column. So this is the lateral column. Okay, and again, this carries uh, sensory fibres up to the brain, but it also carries motor fibres which are coming down from the brain. So, for instance, there's a large portion of the corticospinal tract uh, running in the lateral column. Okay, so there's the lateral column. And then, um, in green, then, finally, we'll have the anterior column. So here, all of this is the anterior white matter column here. And again, this carries a mixture of fibres going up to the brain and fibres going down at, from the brain to the spinal cord. So this is the anterior column. Okay, so you have these three pairs of columns. So all the ones that I've shown here are the right uh, column. So the right dorsal column, the right lateral column, and the right anterior column. Okay, just a few final little things that... Uh, just to complete your terminology. Uh, so, this little strip of white matter that runs in front of uh, the median ventral fissure and also in front of the grey matter here, that's known as the uh, the white commissure, okay? So, the anterior white commissure. Okay, so anterior because it's right at the front, then it's the white because it's white matter, and that's a commissure, okay? So a little horizontal connection between the two, commissure. Right, then you also have these connections between the two halves of the spinal cord that go, that are, that consist of grey matter and are in front of and behind the central canal. So this uh, strip of grey matter going in front of the central canal and between the uh, central canal and the anterior white commissure here, this is known as the anterior grey 
comment here, so can I, uh, I'll, I won't arrow, to, I won't put an arrow to it, but I'll put its name here, so it's known as the anterior grey commissure. Okay, and then finally, uh, the little bit of grey matter running behind uh, the central canal here that connects the two halves, uh, that's known as the posterior grey commissure, so I'll put this down here. Posterior grey commissure. Okay, right, so there's our little uh, deviance into anatomy finished. So this is the anatomy of the spinal cord. Now, here we have our alpha motor neuron um, in the ventral horn of the uh, spinal cord. Now, basically, it has neurons synapsing onto it, which are known as inhibitory interneurons. Okay, so here is a certain type of neuron that synapses onto our alpha motor neuron, and this is what's known as an inhibitory interneuron. So where should I put its name? So this is an inhibitory interneuron, and I'll colour it in in a moment. So how does this inhibitory interneuron um, inhibit the alpha motor neuron and make it less likely that that alpha motor neuron will fire an action potential? Well, basically, it releases glycine onto it. So let's have the inhibitory alpha motor neuron, sorry, the inhibitory interneuron, rather, in pink here. Okay, so in pink here, this is the inhibitory interneuron that we've got here, synapsing onto our alpha motor neuron. So let's uh, draw a bigger picture of that synapse, basically, and uh, have a look at how it works. Okay, so here we have our um, axon terminal of our inhibitory interneuron, okay, and it will synapse onto a dendritic spine on the alpha motor neuron, so it doesn't generally synapse directly onto the dendrite, instead it often they'll synapse onto dendritic spines, and I'll just explain what a dendritic spine is. So if we draw a little picture of our alpha motor neuron here, so our alpha motor neuron will have loads of dendrites coming off its cell body, so it'll look like this sort of starfish shape here, okay? And then it'll have the axon coming off down here. And then it'll have its nucleus within its cell body there. Right, okay, so this is our alpha motor neuron here. Now, these are the dendrites stretching, spanning off uh, the cell body of the uh, alpha motor neuron. However, the axon terminals of these inhibitory interneurons don't synapse directly onto the dendrites. Instead, the dendrites are covered in these tiny little processes which come off them, known as dendritic spines. So this is what's known as a dendritic spine, okay? And um, these are the little processes which actually interface with the axon terminals of um, inhibitory interneurons, in fact, with many different types of neurons. Um, so you have these dendritic spines, which are the things which are actually uh, synapsing with axon terminals. Okay, so the inhibitory interneuron here, and this is the axon terminal of the inhibitory interneuron, it's going to release glycine into the synaptic cleft to try and inhibit the, the um, alpha motor neuron. Okay, so this is releasing glycine, basically. So this is glycine here. So I'll just put a... Well, actually, I suppose I can write out the full name. Glycine. Right, now how is glycine actually going to inhibit this uh, alpha motor neuron? Well, basically, we have receptors for glycine in this uh, membrane of this dendritic spine. So here is the glycine receptor. And I'll just colour it in so it shows up better. Um, what colour will show up nicely? I think turquoise will show up nicely. Don't want to smudge it either. There we go, I think that worked quite well. Okay, considering it's such a tiny little drawing. So basically, on the membrane of these um, um, dendritic spines, you'll have glycine receptors. And glycine receptors are often abbreviated to gly for glycine and then R for receptor. Okay, so... When the glycine binds to this glycine receptor, what happens? Well, let's go through this now. Okay, so we have drawn a very crude, um, 
crude uh, structure for the glycine receptor there. We'll talk about the structure of the glycine receptor in more detail in a moment. But for now, uh, this crude sort of box with a hole down the middle uh, is fine for our discussion of the glycine receptor so far. Okay, so the glycine receptor starts off in what's known as the closed resting state, okay? So this is the closed, and then you put a forward slash, and then resting to imply that it's in the closed resting state. And this is important because there are different closed states, okay? So we'll see later that there's a closed forward slash desensitized state, which is different from the closed resting state. Okay, so this is the closed resting state in turquoise here. Okay, and at this point the channel is not open, it's not conducting any ions, uh, but it can be uh, induced to open by ligand binding. That's the difference between this state and the closed desensitized state. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.